I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, Real Big Tits this morning. We've been dealing with you can get old or you can get saved and last week we were endeavouring to finish off with the D and saved. Uh, we've done the S-A-V-E-D, deconstructing the word. The S was for spiritual, the A was for advantage. The V was for victorious. The E was for excited. And the D was for delivered. And these are some of the things that we receive and happen uh, when we're saved we move into the spiritual we, we become advantaged we get the edge on life become victorious it's a very exciting walk walk of salvation the narrow road And there's deliverance for us from every evil. And then uh, with that last letter D, it was delivered or enslaved. I just want to go over, do a bit more on that enslaved. So we'll go to Luke. 15, starting in verse 11. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood and not many days after the youngest son gathered all together journeyed to a far country and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living when he had spent all there arose when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went, joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, 
bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here, kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Beautiful. Beautiful parable of a young young man who was enslaved because of his selfishness. And that's where selfishness takes us into slavery, doesn't it? When we're the priority as the as the story goes, the prodigal son says in verse eighteen, I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and uh he was still able to recognise the true priority placement was his father in heaven and then his father on earth. We can choose to get old and just be slaves. Slaves uh, growing old, ready to go to hell. Or we can get saved and uh, be set free. Totally set free of self. That's where the freedom is. And We have that true sense of belonging. Uh, when we forget about ourselves, God grants us a real acceptance. In Luke 15, it says, uh, in verse 22 but the father said to his servants bring out the best robe and put it on him and, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf hey eh? And kill it, and let us eat and be merry. It, it truly warrants celebration, doesn't it? Selflessness, repentance, repentance warrants a celebration. The best, the best robe we can wear is a robe of of righteousness a robe of his righteousness not self righteousness as the prodigal was was into right? self righteousness That's the robe he went out with. Self-righteousness. 
I'm entitled to this. As he made clear. And uh, Luke 15, 12. Or let's read 11 too. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. Give me mine. And so he divided to them his livelihood, and not many days after, the youngest son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Definitely, definitely a self, selfish, self-righteous. But the father said in verse 22 to his servants, he come back, he had everything in proper order then, when he come back. He had time to think about things. He realised which side his bread was buttered on. <laughs> but the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe. Bring out the best robe. That's the best robe, isn't it? To be in right standing. With our superiors... Any other robe is just slavery. Bring out the best robe. When we repent, we get in right standing with our superior, our God and our Saviour. And Jesus and we have the righteousness of Father then through Jesus. But the Father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, sandals on his feet. And I would look at that ring on, you know, put the ring on the hand, as an ownership thing and a um, a partnership thing and a, a co-mission thing. I always see it in relation to the Great Commission and and marriage. To the Lord Jesus as the groom and and being part of the bride and of Christ the church and in a uh, a thing of being proud to be with Jesus sense of belonging. Put a ring on his hand, and the father was saying, "You, you, you belong here. You, um, you don't belong eating the pods of pigs. You're not a pig pod person. Hey? You belong in a family that is." Not without, and God's God's family is not without. He He feeds everyone. The Lord feeds everyone, and the Lord is merciful. But uh, 
as we read, the prodigal son, it, it, it doesn't say in the scriptures that, oh, and the young man fell back into his self-righteousness and slavery to self. It doesn't say that, does it? Bring out the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Eh? The gospel is preached to the poor and when we hear and receive the gospel, we're no longer poor. We become rich in Christ and sandals on the feet always lead me to the uh, the feet shod with the gospel of peace that we're at peace he was at peace. He made peace with his Father in heaven and, and with his earthly father. That's a beautiful thing. But there can't be this in and out, in and out. We looked at that last Sunday. The Lord lo loses interest. He lost interest in Esau. Right? He lost interest in Adam and Eve. He lost interest in the lay decent just about to throw the towel in with him. He said, but unless you repent, I'll give you opportunity to repent. Oh, you don't have to repent. Yes, you do. You have to turn away. That's what repent is. Turn away from what you're doing. You can't just say sorry and keep going on. <laughs> going on in your sin. But you, Oh, I said sorry. What does that mean? That's no better than saying sorry to the Aboriginal people and continue to treat them as second-class citizens. At the same time, they have to get get off their hands too. Stop sitting on their hands and get to work and start doing something for themselves at the same time. So it works both ways, doesn't it? Best robe, ring on the finger, sandals on his feet. He no longer looks like a slave. He no longer is a slave. He's back in his rightful position Everything's sorted with Father in Heaven and His earthly Father. And then, verse 23, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And a fatted calf. Hey? Eh? Bring the fatted calf. That's time for celebration, the fatted calf. Not a pig pod. There's a lot of difference in there between pig pods and a fatted calf. <laughs> uh, he would have gladly eaten the pig pods, the f pig food. But now he's got this beautiful roasted uh, fatted calf on the spit turning round there as he sits before the fire 
having a chin wag with, with Dad, with his new sandals on, and his beautiful robe, and a nice ring on his finger, hey? What an atmosphere that would have been. Boy, oh boy. Once I was long, but now I'm found. Now my soul is glory bound. I want to thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. I want to thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Once I was lost, but now I'm found. Now my soul is glory bound. I want to thank you, thank you, Lord, saving me. Once we're lost, but now we're found. It's a beautiful, uh, the found realm. Huh? No longer wandering in the darkness, groping in the dark. Stabbing here and there, hoping this will work out, hoping that will work out. Bring the fatted calf here, verse 23, Luke 15. And kill it. And let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. <laughs> eh? He uses that word dead, for my son was dead. We know very well he wasn't dead, as in dead, dead. But he was dead. Because selfishness and self-righteousness is a stench to God's nostril. And it's, it's death indeed. Okay. There's no best robe, there's no ring, there's no sandals, there's no feather cuff, there's no food. It's just like I'm dying, you know. I'm falling apart out here. I'm, I'm, I'm on my path alone. Okay. He was. That's what he chose. He chose to be there. He was prodigal. He wasn't lost. He was prodigal. Even though it says here, for this my son was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and is found. Even though it says he was lost, and even though it says he was dead. The scripture is not relating to the dead dead, that the word dead, no longer living or breathing, and the lost, he, he deliberately was lost. He chose that path of selfishness and self-righteousness. He chose that path. He didn't choose to, to remain in the local church he wanted to go out there and do his own thing. As I'll run the show, I'll do my own thing. Right? But he soon, he soon knew, he soon found out, didn't he? That uh, he couldn't cut the mustard on his own. Right? Soon found out. That he needed 
his father in heaven and he needed a spiritual father. And he can't just go call the shots when he wants. As he wants. What does it say in Romans chapter 6? And the verse is 20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have back then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit now to holiness. And the end will be everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God it's eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wages of sin is death. You see that? Right. Verse 24, Luke 15. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. <laughs> they began to be merry, but he he was uh, a slave. He was a slave of sin. It wasn't a good thing that he done. It was a sinful thing, and he was free from the righteous requirements of the household and his dad. He was free to go and run wild. Free in regard to righteousness. Accountable to nobody. In subjection to nobody. But he ended up As the scripture says, he joined himself he joined himself verse fifteen Luke fifteen fifteen then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. He would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. No one gave him anything. Joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he hooked up with this citizen of a foreign country. And I didn't give a hoot about him. They didn't give a hoot about him. They were just an unrighteous people. You see by the um, what he he was uh, eating and what he wasn't eating. <laughs> It says he would have gladly, at verse 16, have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine had. No one gave him anything. But he would have gladly. He was happy to just eat the, the, the pig pods. But they didn't even give him that. So it tells you something about those citizens. And the owner of the field, the worker, the 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 boss of the field. Romans six 
20. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? What was the fruit? The fruit, it only produced death. For the end of those things is death. Hey? The end of those things is death. The unrighteous things, the ungodly things. Sin, it can only produce a dead end. And we lose the life and, and the uh, vitality and the, the, um, the light and the, the beauty and the brightness of righteousness. We lose all that. When we choose to go in the opposite direction, it's like Balaam, the prophet. He he knew the right way, but he went the wrong way. So he would gain the wages of unrighteousness. He didn't hate God, he just loved the wages of unrighteousness more. Made a decision that was very wrong. In all this, we need to remember we have to stay humble. We have to stay humble at all times. For the end of those things is death, but now, having been set free from sin, and having become slaves of God, hey, eh? not slaves of unrighteousness, not slaves of selfishness, become slaves of God, you have your fruit. Doesn't lead to death now. Leads to holiness. And then holiness leads to everlasting life. Sin doesn't lead to everlasting life. Sin leads to death. Even the second death, ultimately, the lack of fire and brimstone. That's where sin leads. We know that. We know that without doubt. There can be no doubt. I just go over to Revelation. And last Sunday we had a quick look at this. Then we went to Corinthians. Revelation 21. And the verse is eight. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. See, all that is sin. Cowardly. Unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters. Liar. It's all sin. It doesn't lead anywhere else except to the second death, ultimately. Unless we repent, we just go further downhill. For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free, Having been set free from sin, eh? 
having been set free from sin. We have to acknowledge that. Not just know it. Oh, I've been set free from sin. But we go on in our sin. That's knowing, but not acknowledging. Sin of omission. They know, but they do not do. But now have been set free from sin. And have, having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. So can there be everlasting life with sin? I don't believe so. Because the Lord is coming back for a people's without spot or blemish. Or even a wrinkle. It's an old Pentecostal saying, I, I, I believe evangelical too, there's going to be a lot of sinners in heaven. <laughs> How can that be? There's going to be a lot of sinners in heaven. Could you imagine Jesus surrounded by sinners in heaven? Could you imagine sin being in heaven? And sinful people allowed to be in heaven? How could it be heaven? They'd turn the place upside down, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh dear. It's not possible. We 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 have examples of it. What about Adam and Eve? It was the Garden of Eden. Okay. And they walked in there in the cool of the day with the Lord. The scriptures say. And he booted them out of there because they sinned. So they had to go and they had to change the locks on the gate and he, he evicted them. And then he put a security guard there. But this one wasn't some jelly belly security guard sent out by Centrelink. This was an angel with a flaming sword. <laughs> flaming hell. Yep, you better believe it. An angel with a flaming sword at the gate. So that tells you, doesn't it, where the sinner stands. And it's not inside the gate, it's outside the gate. So back to Revelation, eh? Back to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God which has poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of Jesus, the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest, day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. 
Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labours and their works follow them. So there you have it. Right? That's where the sinner ends up. Tormented. Right? Never end. They say, oh, there's, you know, Jesus is not like that. Jesus is not like that. He wouldn't torment anyone. Well, what what do we read here? Right? What do we read? We read that there's torment for the sinner, those who take the mark of the beast. They would be worldly people, worldly minded, taking the mark who are attached to this world and the things of this world. And we know what Father says about being attached to the things of the world. Those who love the world and the things of the world have not the love of Father in them. Right? We, we know that the sinner is outside the game. We know that. We know that the sinner uh, is not accepted. Revelation 21, 27. But there shall by no means enter in anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. See? Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city, but outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say come, and let him who hears say come, and let him who thirsts come, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. You can get old and perish, die and go to hell, or you can get saved. Eh? And you can be set free from the slavery of sin, self, and Satan, the wrath to come and hell fire, and unrighteousness. Because the Lord came to set the captive free. Who? Outside are dogs. And we know he's talking about people. We know the Lord's talking about people. When he said outside. 
outside of dogs, not inside the house of the Lord. They're talking about those with Christ in them who walk in the Spirit. But outside of dogs, because he he hasn't a connection here. He says, outside of dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral, murder, these are all people. Right? The dogs are so bad, they're just dogs. The pe- these people who are dogs, they must be worse than sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and liars. Because he just calls them dogs. So they must be the first curve off the rank and the worst of the worst. Right? Because even the world has sayings like, what a dog. I mean, what a very low person. Even the world has sayings relating to dogs, calling people dogs. Oh, he's a dog, that blood. You see the way he, he he does this and does that, the way he lives. And so, where are we? We're in Romans six, in verse twenty to twenty three. Twenty two says, "But now, having been set free from sin." And we've got it everywhere that it has been done. It has been done. We've been set free from sin. It's just got to compute. It has to register. Eh? With most people, it hasn't computed. So they just keep going on and sin. It's sort of like they've been there for so long. It's like the bear in the cage and he's been there for years and years and the poor old bear is got all these uh, scabs on him and all his fur uh, is falling out and very unhealthy just like a sinner and they open the cage and he just stays there. And he, he doesn't bother to get out because he's just so conditioned to that cage. And, and people become so conditioned to sin. But it makes it clear. But now having been set free from sin and now you're a slave of God, no longer of the world circus, in that cage. Huh? With all that fleas and disease all over you of sin. Having been set free from sin. And what does it say in Romans? Same chapter, Romans 6 verse 14. For sin shall have no dominion over you. You are not under law, but under grace. Under the power of God. Who's going to chain you up? Who's going to put you in the cage when you're under the power of God? Chain, chain, chain. 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 Chain, chain, Da 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 we're going to be a fool for the devil or we're going to be a fool for the Christ. I know which one I'll choose. Ah, <laughs> oh dear. Galatians. 
Can we go there, please? Chain, chain, chain. Chain of food. Well, I had told you before. Ain't nobody's fool. Galatians 4 and the verses. I, but then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not God. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by him, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? You observe days, months, seasons and years. I'm afraid for you, lest I have laboured for you in vain. Went back to the slavery of days and months and seasons and years of the weak and beggarly elements of the world. The Gregorian calendar, eh? Not the glorious freedom and liberty of the Christos Sabbath. Christ is our Sabbath. Christ is our freedom. Christ is our joy. Christ is our peace. Christ is our all. Hallelujah. Chain, chain, chain. Chain, chain, chain. Chain, chain, chain. Chain, chain, chain. I told you before. And nobody's fool. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, Aretha Franklin sang that song, didn't she? And she ended up in chains. Hey? She ended up in the pink Cadillac. <laughs> Started off in a, in a church and it all got the better of her, the fame and fortune. Will we see Aretha in heaven? Will we see... Elvis in heaven. Hey. I don't know really, ultimately, but going by their lifestyle, I can't imagine it. I gather Tina Turner had it, something to do with the gospel somewhere along the line too. But it's not good to have a smear of of the Saviour. We can't just have a smear of Jesus in our life. Eh? I rub shoulders with him when I was a child. Do you still rub shoulders with him? <laughs> Is he still your right hand man? But now, verse 8, But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not God. But now, after you have known God, or rather known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly element? Turn again. To the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in slavery, in bondage. You observe days and months and seasons and years. Paul says, have I laboured in vain? Hey? You can get old with your Gregorian calendar, die and go to hell, or you can get saved and live in the liberty of the Christ Sabbath, who is our Sabbath. Christ our Sabbath, 
our rest, our peace, our joy, our liberty, our all. We don't want to be enslaved. I don't do me for yeah. I'm nobody's fool. I know that Jesus is also true. No, I won't go back. To my slavery and eating those pots and of those pigs. Slave, chain, chain, slave, slave, oh, chain, 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 and you see, Paul, he calls that slavery, days, months, seasons. <laughs> and years, days, months, seasons, you know. Oh, it's this, this is the day, and this is the day. Oh, it's such and such a day. It's Christmas day. It's Santy day. It's rabbit season. It's the year of the rabbit. It's the year of the of the dragon. It's, it's the... Um, Wolof, he knows it is, he knows. It's beggarly, Paul says. Observation of days and months, seasons. When we're observing that all the time, we lose track of the, the messianic zone. We, we start to become governed by seasons and days and... Oh, we've got to get ready. It's all like, you know, the season of the sausages or the season of the Krispy Kremes, you know? Oh, we've got to get ready for this and get ready for that. Who said so? Oh, the Gregorian calendar. Yeah, but who gives a hoot what King Gregory said? It really doesn't matter. I want to know what King Jesus says. Jen, 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 jen. Chains of fools. Ah, don't do me for yeah. I am nobody's fool. And my Lord Jesus, ah, he's the truth. Yeah, so um, we don't want to be enslaved by these things because the world is there and it's enslaved by birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Uncle's Day, LGBTQRSTWXYZ Day, and Ladies' Day, Men's Day, Half Ladies' Day, Half Men's Day, uh, Man Ladies' Day, Lady Man's Day. <laughs> Hey? Football day, cricket day, it, it's the the year of the under intereticus that just passed us by. It's a Look, you can be in chains all the way to to your deathbed and then go to hell for eternity, being tormented day and night. The smokes of their torment went up day and night. There's no rest. Jesus the Lamb and the angels watching on, observing and watching people being tormented for eternity. Can you believe that? I believe it because it's written. I believe it. I preach it. I teach it. I accept it. And I rejoice in it. I rejoice in the Word of God. 
and I speak as the oracles of God, and I minister with the ability that he's giving me, he has given me. I didn't have to go and find the ability, I didn't have to learn the ability, I didn't have to, to get a certificate or pay for the ability. He has given me the ability to speak. It's not some uh, orator's uh, format and, and uh, systematic speech. It's as the Spirit lives. That's the ability God has given the preacher to speak as the Spirit lives. Hallelujah. With a Y-A-H on the end, not J-A-H. Because God's name ultimately is Yah. The Father, Son and Holy Ghost ultimately are called Yah. Y for Yeshua, A for Almighty, and H for Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Yah. Y H W H in the Hebrew text. Y A H W E H in the English. J J J. Oh yeah, Jesus, 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 Yeah, I told you before, ain't nobody's fool. But my Jesus, ow, oh, he's true. 1 Corinthians 6, and we had a look at this, didn't we? A Sunday. 1 Corinthians 6, uh, and the verse is 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither will fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexual, sodomite, thieves, covetous, drunks, revelers, extortioners will enter the kingdom of God. And such were, past tense, some of you, but you were washed, sanctified, justified in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit. In the name of Lord Jesus, born of Jesus and born of the Spirit, born of the Word and born of the Spirit. That's how we were uh, washed by the Word. That's how we were sanctified, separated by the Word. That's how we're justified by the Word. Our justification, Jesus, our justification. Haven't I told you that I was nobody's fool? We gotta be fools for Christ. We can't just be anyone's old fool. Hey? As the worldly song says, everyone's somebody's fool. Everyone's somebody's baby. No. We gotta be fools for Christ. And you will you will appear a, a fool if you do what Jesus says. If you minister with the abilities he, He's given you, oh dear. People will be thinking, oh, that man needs to go to school to learn how to speak. <laughs> that 
Now that's just because they're in the carnal zone and they cannot comprehend it. They just don't have that uh, quicksilver mindset. (laughs) When you move into the spirit, we get that quicksilver mindset with that sharp thinking, bang, bang, bang. And it, surprisingly enough and miraculous, miraculous, miraculously enough, it all fits together and um, presents a a picture. It's it's just a uh, very Jesusy jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> Eh? because you've been set free to break in to the spiritual realm, into the Jesus zone, mounting up with wings like eagles, no longer a slave of unrighteousness, no longer feeding on worldly pig pods, eh? no longer... Uh, enslaved to days, months, seasons, but it's just one great river of living and life that you've broken into white water rafting the word of God. Hallelujah. Jing, jing, jing. Jing, jing, Yes, they will not enter the kingdom. They're hell-bound slaves, aren't they? And such were some of you, but in order to escape hellfire, eternal and fire and brimstone and and become uh, one who will inherit the kingdom of God, we have to be washed, we have to be sanctified and we have to be justified. Washed, sanctified, justified. Then you can enter the kingdom. If we continue on as washed, and sanctified and justified. We can't be washed, sanctified and justified and then divert and not walk as the Spirit leads because these are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God. Doesn't say these are the sons of God who are born again. Doesn't say these are the sons of God who are water baptised. Well, these are the sons of God who do good deeds. These are the sons of God who give tithing. These are the sons of God who keep a Saturday Sabbath. These are the sons of God who um, promote Methuselah. Or these are the sons of God who work uh, 23 hour days. Or these are the sons of God who go to Bible college these are the sons of God who feed the poor. It says these are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God. They're walking in the light now 
in the spirit, you see. Oh, ting, ting, ting. Walking in the light, walking in the spirit, sanctified, cleansed, delivered. Not just getting old and wrinkly and withering and perishing, fearful, doubtful, heading to hell. Oh, we don't want to. We don't want to be with that group. Eh? We don't want to be with that group. Let's go over to Acts five. Seven to five. See what Father's got for us there. X five seventeen. Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. The high priest and those who... I should say, and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel sent to the prison to have them brought. Verse 19, Acts 5. But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. You know... The Lord brought me out. The Lord opened the prison doors for me. He took my soul out of prison. And he told me to go and speak to the people all the words that he's given me. Hey? <laughs> hey? That's what the Lord does. He sets us free. He breaks the bonds of prison. Eh? He set me free, oh, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Come back the fire by Jesus with me. Glory to God, he set me free, oh, he set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. Come magnify my Jesus with me. Glory to God. He set me free. It's gonna be healing tonight. Healing tonight. Oh, healing in the old gospel hall. It's gonna be healing tonight. Yeah, healing tonight. Healing in the old gospel hall. But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors. <laughs> That's the God we serve. That's the, the, the deliverance of the Lord. That's the awesome God we serve. That's just nothing for one angel. Opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, Go and stand in the temple and speak to the people the words of this life. Go stand and speak. Hey? That's it. Go stand and speak. And I hope you do today, dear listener. I hope you do today. That you go stand and speak. Do you hear this message? It encourages you. Turns the coals of love in your heart. And you, you fire up and go out. And you stand somewhere and speak one way or another. Loudly, quietly, with a brochure in your hand, or just stand there with a sign and go and speak to the people and tell them you don't have to 
get old and wither away, go to the grave and go to hell, you can get saved. Hallelujah. You can become a spiritual person. You can be on the advantaged list. You can be victorious and have an exciting life and be delivered. And you don't have to worry about the chains that fools accept. Chain, 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 the fool. Well, I told him before, yeah. Ain't nobody's fool. Oh, I walk with Jesus. He's my Lord, you know. Yes, he set me free to do his will. Now I'm rejoicing without the chains of food. Yeah, chain, chain, chain. Oh, chain, chain, chain. Oh, chain, chain, chain. Chains of food. We don't have to have them all wrapped around us because he come to set the captive free. Go tell the people today. Go and tell them and say, look, did you know Jesus come to set the captive free? Don't go fearing. Fear not. And call on the Lord and he'll be with you. Don't fear. Don't be worried. Don't be troubled. Put it in the Lord's hands. Give it to the Lord. Walk with him. Read about how great he is. Go to his book. Go to the Holy Bible and read and and receive and rejoice and, and remember and continue to return to the pages of the Bible and under his wings, over the obstacles, back under the power of God, then over the... Obstacles. Under his grace, over the obstacles, under the wings, under the, the written word, powering up again, going forward again, being a drink offering, pouring out, getting filled up again, going out again. You won't have to have those chains of fools around you, heading to hell, slavery of pig pods. Hey, just walk in that victory. I'm going to give all the glory to Jesus today because I don't know what to say. But he always gives me something to say. And he always gives me something to say that can be of value to the man in the street and to the saint in the pew hey? or the saint in the queue or those waiting in the queue. <laughs> Let's rejoice. It's another day the Lord has given us. Let's make good with it for his glory. Let's redeem the day for the glory of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Thank you, Jesus. Chain, chain, chain.